Okay, let's start our show. Uh, welcome everyone to the uh, regular meeting of the Swanton Village Board of Trustees for Monday, May 22nd, 2023. Um, any review of our agenda this evening? Changes, uh, additions? I see we have an executive session request. Uh, other than that, we're going as it's printed. So, if you'll welcome Tim, if you'll uh, help me uh, start this meeting by pledge of allegiance to our flag, please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So, looks like we have an audience tonight, which is great. I mean, a, a live audience. Uh, any public comment before we get started? Anybody want to say anything? Sun's out. Hello. Siobhan. Siobhan Cooper. Um, I'm here for Swan Enhancement Project Communications. I want to let you guys know that... We, Beautification Committee is going to be doing a Yard of the Year contest. <laughs> one vote will be, well, there'll be three winners. One will be a popular vote by the public. Uh, and then two will be by committee. Committee members will do their own category, so there's no, you know, nepotism when we vote for so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are we allowed to enter? Uh, you live in Swan. <laughs> I don't know if I would. He's on the beautiful, well, Marie's on the beautification committee, right? It's on what? On the beautification committee, Marie. So she can just do the committee members. We're going to do a separate okay. one for her. Okay. Members, so. okay. Uh, is that, that it, or you want to say something about it? or more? Um, No, just spread no. the word. Um, and then I'll also start working more towards helping you guys spread the word on what you guys got going on. How did Saturday go? Looks good. Really good. Yeah. Really good. They did a wonderful job. I wasn't there the whole time, but yeah. So she can tell you more. I counted over twenty-five people there. It's the most people we've ever had. That's good. On planning day, um, and we have over eleven new members on that committee. Yeah. And they're young. Great. A lot of young families who are bringing their teenage children uh -huh. um, and we added four more boxes as you know yes, the bridge, I saw that on the bridge. in the village as you know our you know dean is putting drip hoses in some of the beds in the park uh -huh. so, um, and we planted more flowers and pots than we ever had so okay. i want to thank the village for their support good as well good. yeah thank you guys for the, the shed the water lines the help. Yeah. You're welcome. Coming off of a good start to last week, with Monday the state people came up. And we actually got a reaction from them later in the week. That's great. We did. Well, we did. I don't know if we did. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Tim. So, okay. <clears throat> Any, anybody else want to say anything under public comment? If not, uh, item number five, approve and uh, accept our minutes from our Monday, May 8th, 2023 meeting as presented. I will make the motion. We approve the minutes as presented for Monday, May 20th, whatever, May 8th. May 8th, 2020. I second the motion. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded to approve and accept our minutes from Monday, May 8th. Uh, any discussion? Nope, spot on. If not, all those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, abstentions, good. Uh, motions carried unanimously. Item number six, approve and accept the village warrants through Thursday, May 18th, 2023. What's your pleasure on the warrants? I would move that we accept the warrants through May 18th, 2023. That's 47 through 51. And I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. 
to approve and accept the village warrants through May 18th. Any discussion on those questions? Just one question. All right. Uh, Which one? <laughs> on warrant number 51. That's what I'm on. And... 86945 for M Power. Oh. That's the website? M Power? No, M Power. That's the 457 plan. Yeah. So, a voluntary retirement plan that we let oh. people that, that people belong to, yep. that's a weekly contribution that's withdrawn out of people's paychecks. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, anything else? No, no, that's all I had. Nope. Okay, that being said, all those in favor of <clears throat> approving accepting warrants through May 18th, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions, none. It's carried unanimously. The motion is carried. Um, item number seven Tim Smith, Franklin County Industrial Development Corporation update. Yeah, how are you? Glad to see you, Tim. <laughs> Tim? Uh, thanks for making time on the agenda for me. Uh, no, uh, really, may not be aware, but I can I try to get around all this like more than trustees at least once a year. Yep. Yeah. Talk about what's going on with the NCIDC. And, um, you know, we touched on, I thought the, uh, the visit from the, the governor's cabinet last week was very successful. Uh, your team did a great job. Uh, conveyed it. I guess I'm curious as to what your follow-up outreach was um did they send you money or did they <laughs> the follow-up outreach was outstanding they reached out to us to schedule a call we had a call with them last thursday yes, yes. Uh, outreach for a variety of different programs um, in particular wastewater treatment facility and uh, and some funds there that it'll be competitive but i think we have a really good shot at at least a million dollars for that project Good. yeah you know, I, I thought the, uh, the event up in Richford, the overview was excellent. Um, yes. You know, I think that's something that as a region, uh, we shouldn't wait for them to reach out to us. I think we should um, make the effort uh, at least yearly to, uh -huh. to do the same thing uh, within the county. To, to, uh, uh, I, I just think there's a lot of information that they have that sometimes we skim over on emails or we, we don't take note of, of what they have to offer. I think a, a visit like that would be uh, would be valuable to yeah. to all communities for sure. And I think that one definitely would. So um, similar to that, uh, uh, June fifth or sixth, I think uh, Billy were here. Uh, so the Northern Vermont Economic Development District, which is made up of uh, the six northern counties: Franklin, Grand Isle, Memorial, Caledonia, Essex, and Orleans. We have an organization that meets every two months, and we we put together a product which is called is called SEDS, which is the abbreviation for the Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy, and the reason for that is um, it allows us to be eligible for EDA money. So, like the the airport project got EDA money um, with, through uh, Heidi's Heidi's efforts. Um, that would not be possible if we did not have this, uh, the structure of the Northern Vermont Economic Development District. Uh, if you remember, Chris, you, all of you may remember the Northern Vermont <coughs> Econom Econ uh, no, Econom Economic Development Council of Northern Vermont was run by uh, Connie Little uh, probably eight, 10 years ago. That disbanded and then this one was uh, this design was structured with a lot of work with Catherine Dimitri. So we're back up and running. We had that for eight years or whatever it's been, but it allows us to get that EDA money. And I'm sure Billy will be having, well, he, Billy's um, the rep here, just like Red was on that council. So you, you, um, you get uh, good information on uh, grants and other things that are available. So uh, that, long story short, that group is coming here June 6th which is a Tuesday, uh, we'll be meeting here and then we're going to get a tour of the hydro plant up in Highgate. So uh, we moved the meetings around uh, now that COVID's over. Um, you know, we had a visit on the rail trail a couple months ago. Um, you know, we've been to uh, a number of, they were in uh, St. Albans, we did a walk through there a, year, a couple years ago. But um, 
So we just get around to the region, learn what, what's going on throughout the region, and then uh, use it as a catalyst for some possible grant dollars going forward. So uh, looking forward to the, to, to the hydro visit for sure. Uh, for us, uh, we have a groundbreaking tomorrow in the industrial park in St. Albans Town, and that is a company called Purpose Energy. Purpose Energy has a couple operations throughout the state of Vermont, but the, this, and they're all the same, but they're structured in the sense that they take in uh, food waste uh, and then they convert it to, uh, to energy and put it back to the grid. So um, they're constructing one now down in Middlebury uh, with utilizing Agrimar, and they did one, uh, they had a smaller operation at Magic Hat in South Burlington. Um, I'm not sure the status of that since Magic Hat, I think, sold or closed. I'm not sure. This is in your industrial park? Yeah, it's the first uh, first lot we've sold. It's a small lot, three acres. Mm -hmm. um, and they're doing it. So they're, it's adjacent to Ben and Jerry. So they're yeah. gonna, the Ben and Jerry's waste is going to be pumped into uh, the Purpose Energy facility and then um, convert it to energy. Um, yeah. they, Do they take food scraps? I'm, I'm not sure the total uh, format, Sandy, but they could like they could take the waste from Jerry Calibo, they could take the waste from Franklin Foods, they could take the waste from what, if if uh, the cheese plant gets up and running, they can take that waste. So more on a on an industrial level than it is on the individual level. So they take, for instance, Yeah, I'm sure that's a, that's a good question. We can. Uh, we can inquire about that. So we're excited about it. Um, you know, we've had other inquiries about, with, regarding land. Um, the, the the other question we get a lot is about beta and the ener energizer plant. Mm -hmm. So beta is uh, they've made substantial investment in the into the building already. They have their test uh, facility. They've constructed uh, concrete. Uh, test sites on the back side of the building, um, doing a lot of piping and um, uh, HVAC work. So that is uh, moving forward. Still don't have any employees on site. If you drive around there, you see the red tape. So they had to do some stormwater uh, runoff infrastructure. That's on the south end of the building. You can see the orange tape as you drive by. So that's another uh, another item <coughs> moving forward significantly. Um, for us, uh, we're wrapping up phase two in Enosburg. We bought the Turley block. Um, the, so the building was vacant on the first floor, 5,000 square feet, another 2,500 square feet in the cold warehouse out back, and with eight apartments. Uh, when we're done, hopefully at the end of June, we will have um, We'll have on the first floor two retail spots, um, and uh, about uh, office space for 20 people who will be occupying. So the Franklin Northeast Supervisory is in there, and NCSS will be making a couple offices as well. I have a development review board meeting in Enosburg soon. To uh, we're looking at putting four additional apartments up above uh, the warehouse space that we converted as well. The question might be, why are we getting into that type of uh, investment as opposed to what our initial mission 50 years ago was industrial development? Um, when we did our strategic plan, we heard from a lot of folks that you know the, the region, based on the workforce and the lack of workforce, um, why do we want to focus on bringing new business, which could potentially draw away from other businesses, so we pivoted a little bit and we focus on quality of life in communities. So if you look at uh, you, this, the situation in the village was premature to this strategic planning discussion, but we did, were engaged in a very minor level um, with the memorial building. Um, we put 30,000, we had 30,000 invested, 15 went to move BMTM. 15 went to engineering for um, Dave Fosgate to construct a new building. So we do have some in that sort of a, uh, we have, um, we invested 10,000 into the 
um, town administrator up in Richburg to get that going because they didn't have an administrator. So we committed ten thousand to offset <coughs> that cost this year and next year. So the focus is to to really work on uh, creating the villages and, and helping them to succeed. If we're if we're successful in that, more people will look to move to the area. Not that we have housing yet, that's a different different discussion, different problem. But if we can attract people here and increase our workforce, then everyone will benefit. So that's sort of the, the big picture uh, mentality that we're moving forward with. We're still going to sell land in industrial park. We're still looking for uh, clientele like we did for Green Mountain Knitting um, in the old Milan building. Um, still having conversations about Lucille Farms, and uh, we've shown that probably four or five times. Um, so that's that's the direction, and it's not it's not all in. It's just as opportunities arise, we, we look to help them. So, Tim. Were you at the gathering last week? I was, yeah. yeah. Well, is there one takeaway that you got from it as far as Swanton? I mean... Well, I, I think the one uh, for me and the people here were, um, they were impressed with the commitment to the village, for sure. They were impressed with the commitment from Gordy Winters and, and Debbie Winters, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's their investment into that. It's, it's similar to... Our investment in Enosburg, we didn't, we haven't gotten any grants yet to speak of. I think we got a small one in the sprinkler system. We did get some tax credits, as did Gordon, but um, they're investing their own money with very, very limited uh, public money, if you will. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think the thing, I think the group and, and I, uh, you know, we impressed with the commitment to the village. That's that's the thing we heard the most of. Cool. Thank you. So. Um, so uh, I don't know if anyone has any questions for me, but we're, um, we, the other thing we did, we had a, uh, we had a luncheon in St. Albans on, uh, on Saturday uh, with a uh, select board person and the mayor from St. John were down. So we're trying to get back to having those cross-border discussions, yeah. um, educating them about what's on both sides of the border. Um, it sounds like uh, the I-35 is moving along well, and, um, mm -hmm. and so um, there's going to be a lot of activity at the border here in the next two to three years for sure. So. Thoughts on the airport. Um, the beta company, I would think they might be interested in being near an airport. That's the rumor, Chris. I don't know. <coughs> that that's sort of what yeah. you hear about the uh, field days yeah but it's nothing yeah. that um nothing that i have heard or i think that's just the you know, sort of the rumor mill it could be true but i don't is, i can't tell you one way or the other is beta the one that's putting the young pilot program together up there they're they're trying to get some uh, train some young uh, pilots. George Poy and uh, Beth White, they've been doing that for a number of years, the, the Young Eagles uh, program. Um, so Beta is a little more engaged in it. Beth uh, has reached out to Beta to help out as well. So, um, but you're right, Chris, I mean, it, um, it, it makes sense for them, for sure. Um, what's happening in St. Elmas is just battery testing. It's not, it's nothing more than that. I say nothing more. I mean, that's... Um, it's a wicked interesting company. If you're, if you're an engineer and you're looking at <coughs> some of the cool stuff they're doing, it's yeah. And I, I would. Uh, uh, I just went down with a friend. We got a tour. So that we, on our board, we have a young woman, Leilani King, who is a, who was born and raised in St. Albans and is um, is working for uh, for Beta in Burlington, and has always uh, they love showing the building off and. Uh, Showing what they do. Cool. So if anyone's interested, we can coordinate a visit. Um, but they are they're definitely uh, optimistic that they'll be the first one to the finish line, I think, in terms of the electric point. Would it be appropriate for the Swanton Village to just write them a letter and say, come on up and take a look? <laughs> If they haven't already. Yeah, do we do we know an address and a name to the I got, I got Oh sure. <coughs> yeah, if we can get that just just to tell them, hey, welcome. Come take a look. We'd love to work with you. And 
to that point, we had a board dis discussion where same thing, we need to be a little more proactive, like when companies like Vermont Knitting move in or Green Mountain Knitting, um, do a little more outreach, welcome. Um, so from, a, from more from a community perspective than a SMDC perspective. But as new companies move, like, like Purpose Energy coming into the industrial park, we'll be doing some outreach to is their power going right out to the grid or is it going to feed other businesses in the right to the grid do you have any idea how much power they anticipate a megawatt what's that a megawatt of no i don't know the amount chris but i guess i put it more financially if they're buying land and creating well it must be it's got to be feasible Payback has to be significant, so I would think more than a megawatt for sure. I'd just be curious with, you know, sometimes the, the grid itself is fragile. I, I'm sure they've looked into all that too, so. Yeah, I mean, right through the park is a transmission line. Right. So it's, yep. the transmission line is probably um, 100 yards from their, yep. from their building. So yep. that saves them six, six, six Oh, yeah, there. yeah. yeah. So, no, we wish them the best. Thank you. So the word from people that hang out at the airport is that Kyle, Clark, and uh, George cool. are good friends. Kyle Clark. The story is Kyle Clark took his first flight as a teenager here Up in here? Good. I love that story. That is so exciting that this young man from Essex Junction is <clears throat> going to be known all over the world, if not already. So, anyone have any questions of me? Uh, Tim, you touched on it. I was just wondering about the Canadian interest. Does it was, are they still looking down here? As how so we, we looked at, uh, we looked at the former Vermont Brick building uh, about a month ago. Uh, uh -huh. Company was interested in that. Um, if you haven't been by the Vermont Bridge building, um, Travis Belisle, who bought it, the building is all gutted. I mean, you had to take out tons and tons of machinery and furnaces and all that. And right now it's down to, to bare bones. Still needs a lot of work, new roof, siding, uh, a new uh, floor, concrete floor for sure. But he's making his way, he's making that way, and when it's done, I don't think it'll take long for that building to show up. But we showed that building. Um, uh, so, yeah, there's in one weekend, you know, probably about three weeks ago, or a Friday and a Monday, I had three calls for a variety of reasons for warehousing, manufacturing, but they were all looking for at least 20,000 square feet. How big is that building up there? 34, I think. But they all, Three, three different inquiries were yeah. 20,000 each. Yeah. That's good. So there's still some interest there yeah. in our area. Yeah. Yeah, if, we had, if we had space, for sure. Um, and then you reminded me, so uh, we're sending out the proposal for a feasibility study to this tomorrow or Wednesday for um, potential um, places for the field base to go to. Oh, so yeah. we'll look at, we'll send that out. Field days are putting the bill for the feasibility study. Uh -huh. and, um, see if they can find a, a home, a new home to go to. Um, oh. the early indication is it needs to be <clears throat> in this region, just due to soil and, you know. So they'll eventually have to remove all those buildings up there? <clears throat> Or they leave them and some of them will remove them. Yeah. Huh. No. So they'll be there this summer. Uh, we'd like to think we could push maybe two years, depending on what the feasibility study tells us. Because yeah. wherever they go, they need they need to reconstruct those buildings. They need to run the infrastructure. They need yeah. to all that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. so then the other piece is. Uh, Last I heard, the state was still looking for 
land options for the welcome center between here and the river. Uh -huh. so they, are, they, they are progressing, looking for, for an opportunity to buy land. So. Well, there's still interest in the area. That's the main thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anybody else have any questions for Tim? Is there a, uh, do you know if they have an <coughs> estimation on when the Canadian Highway would be finished? Uh, it's moved along for quicker than I thought, because I thought it was uh, in 2024. The, the mayor from St. John said it'd probably be sooner than that. Oh. And it comes in, uh, if, if you know, I think it's, it's coming into where the flashing light is by St. Armand. Mm -hmm. I think that's where it's going to enter and then you shoot down yep. to the border from there. <clears throat> so that'll be, that'll be huge for the area. Yeah. Hopefully the more trucks will go down that way and we'll come through the village. Well, AOT says 25 to 30% reduction in traffic, mm -hmm. truck traffic. So they said 30% uh, diversion from mm -hmm. Champlain yep. to here and not that it matters as much but from Derby Line to here. If you get that diversion, 30%, that's, right. it's going to prove to be less trucks for you. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the U.S. government is supposed to enlarge the crossing on our side, too, right? Yes. I think seven or eight. I think that's 2026. Uh -huh. 2026? Yeah, that's multi, multi millions. Yeah. Yeah. Big yeah. 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 For sure. It's great to have the lanes, but it's also nice to have people to man the lanes. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of lanes now. That yeah. Get <laughs> that's right. 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 That's true. Okay. Okay. That's true. That's good news. So. Okay. Thank you. Good. Thank, thank you, Tim. Yes, thank you. Thanks, so, Tim. Appreciate it. If it was a rainy night, I'd stick around, Neil, but I think I'll probably. No problem. I don't blame you. <laughs> Before you go home, I just want to say, how long, Tim, have you been at FCI or DC? Uh, I just started my 22nd year. So what FCI or DC has accomplished for Franklin County is overwhelming. I mean, I don't know how to properly thank you for what you do. Sam, did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> of course he did. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks, Tim. Thank Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Good night. Okay, item uh, number eight. Um, we'll have a water treatment plant presentation from our manager of the plant, Todd Jones. Uh, he's up this this week. So. <laughs> so we are sharing for the folks that are watching uh, online. Uh, Lynn, can you verify that you can actually see that uh, on your screen on your end? Yes, I can. Okay, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> the owl. The owl is great. Yeah. The owl's the best. Okay, sir. Take All it away. Right. I'm Todd Jones. Um, so the water plant was upgraded in 2012. It's still in very good condition. Um, we have two filters that are 700 gallons per minute, uh, and we only run one filter at a time. Uh, the reason I'm talking about this is with the eventual water line going up to the airport, People were nervous about usage, about can we keep up capacity? We definitely can. Um, I was told we're not going to see hardly anything at first, and if they do eventually upgrade industrial-wise, then we may have to consider doing something later down the road. But we're, we uh, run normally like 240 to 320 gallons per minute a day, which is nothing compared to like St. Albans and Burlington. and so. Um, we do use a little more obviously in the summertime because everyone's washing their cars and watering their lawns. But overall, we don't, we're not cranking out. We're not, you know, it's, it's a nice plant. So um, we also have 15, uh, 1,500,000 gallons in storage up on the Donaldson Road. Um, when our plant shuts down, we run gravity feed from there. Our plant will shut down six times a day for flushing the clarifier on the filter and then it will shut down an additional two times to backwash the filter. So in that time, we're running gravity fed. When we are pumping, we're pumping water up there, so the, there is movement constantly in the, in the system, so, which is a good thing. Um, so when the, like I said, when the new line runs up to the airport, we should hardly notice anything at all in the usage for now, unless major corporations come in. Right. Um, 
we have very safe water. A lot of times I get people calling and questioning the water. You know, have to reaffirm, reaffirm and tell them everything is good. Uh, we test uh, four times a month for bacterial that I take down to Endine Lab. And twice or, or uh, every week I'm doing fluoride checks to make sure we're within the parameters that the state wants us to be. So we, you know, our water is completely safe. I've had customers before worried about mold. Well, when you have chlorine in the system, there's going to be no mold. We also use UV on the systems, which UV will sterilize any bacteria, and then the chlorine will kill it. So the water is completely safe, which is a good thing. Um, in the summer months, when the water gets very warm, we use potassium permanganate to mask the smell and the taste of the lake water. So we monitor that daily. Like we, <clears throat> our pumps, if we need to, we'll turn them up. If, as the water gets warmer, we need a little more. As it gets less, we use less, which is nice. So, but we constantly are monitoring that. We're monitoring our chlorine residual and the pH. So we have so much lab work, and I just want to make sure people know that the water is extremely safe. So, um, as for plant updates, uh, we're in the process of upgrading some equipment that is no longer we can get parts for now. Um, they probably were installed back in 2012. When you call to talk about the possibility of replacing a part or something on them, they're like, they're outdated. You got to get new. So we, we had in a budget, we're replacing those as needed, so we're safe, we're never gonna break down, not be able to have, we, we have backup equipment all, you know, ready to rock and roll. So our, our breakdowns are very limited, which is good, so. Um, you're doing all your preventive maintenance? So yeah, always, yeah. always. That's uh, our, past, our past maintenance team started up with preventive maintenance, and that yeah. is one of our big key sticking points is we, we're always doing preventive maintenance so we don't have breakdowns. Right. And it, and it really does help. So uh, down out the plant itself, um, there's been some trees that have, through the years have died, you know, so we've re removed them. I have a few more that I need to get rid of down there at some point in time. But the future plan is to replant trees down there. Some that aren't as invasive as some of the pine trees that were there, like nuisance. <laughs> but uh, so that's, that's something that we'll be getting here in the very near future is getting somebody down there, getting a quote to and figure out what kind of trees would be good. Not apples, not pears, none of those. We don't, you know, we do have a lot of animals down there, but <laughs> we have a fox and three pups down there right now, and they're running around all the time, even in the daytime. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're living in a culvert. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Um, so I also did, around the building down there, I put stone, decorative stone around it, because <clears throat> nothing would grow underneath where the, where in the under drain or whatever. And so we put down material, put down stone to make it look better. Don't have to weed whack around there. There's some other spots down there that I'm gonna to continue to do, you know, make the place look a lot better, a little fresher. A lot of trimming of the tree branches, opening things up, and it, it really has improved a lot. Um, last year we had, um, I had the Swanton Town come down and they used their uh, tractor with the boom on and cut some brush and Dwayne in the electric department, they cut underneath the line. So we moved back with growth that needed to be removed. So we're gonna to continue to cut, keep cutting that down and maybe try and grow a little more, more grass, make it look more presentable. You know, it's really, it's a lot of steps in the right direction, a lot of preventive maintenance on the outside too. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so plant updates, we actually had, uh, at the beginning of this year, we had some issues uh, with our filter, we were having getting called in quite a bit for for issues. Um, some of the issue is like we try to keep turbidity down, which turbidity is the measurement of H2O clarity. So it's little stuff inside the water you can't see, but we have equipment that lets us know how clean the water is, and we have standards that we won't send water out that's above what the state wants us to, and we maintain that constantly, which is a good thing. But um, so as we were having these issues, the filters would go into like double backwashes and we just couldn't maintain the alum. We couldn't maintain a few different things the way we needed to. We called in the company West Tech and they sent a representative down to help us. And we went through each filter and we learned so much in the process of how to continuously maintain them and learned about what we thought were the possible issues and we're in the process of rectifying that. So, which is a good thing. 
Um, Skeeter. <laughs> <laughs> so that that was a very the, guy, the gentleman was down there for three days with us and it was we learned so much so not only myself but a couple of the other maintenance guys it was it was a very good thing and so we feel we can do things a lot better quality wise a lot you know less call-ins and so far it's worked we're really we're under what we were so yeah that's a very good thing um, safety considerations so I was the only operator down there for well, all the years we've had normally usually one operator down there. After Brian Bishop retired, even when I took over, still just by myself. But after recent events, uh, we've decided that uh, I actually was uh, given uh, one of the maintenance guys to come down and be part of my team when he's not needed elsewhere, which is good. And we're getting a lot of stuff done that I would normally have to fix something and then go do it. So we're working in tandem, which is working out really good. Uh, he's he is Avery Mitchinson. He's actually uh, going for his 4C license too. So he just got an operator in training, and it takes quite a while to learn. And then when I'm when I say he's ready, he can go take the test, and he'll get his license eventually, which will have eventually all four people with all the same licenses at both plants, which is a really good thing. So we cover between the wastewater plant and the water plant three guys right now. Well, now four work back and forth to help each other. We have chores on the weekends to do, and so it's really nice to have extra bodies around and extra help. So, and so he's uh, doing very, very good. He's a, a good addition to the plant down there. I don't mind not being alone anymore. <laughs> it's nice to have somebody there. Um, so we had two areas of concern when we did a safety evaluation of, our, of the water plant. And on the lower lift station down below at the lakeside, there's a ladder that's about 10 foot, and it's just attached to the wall, so you're going down the ladder. Um, we hadn't had any safety harnesses or equipment before, but we're going to now. And also, like, I would always go down in there myself and check things. Well, not now. Anytime we're doing something in that regards, there's going to be two people, and we're also going to set up the safety equipment to make sure we're covered. Uh, the reservoir is the same way. There's two areas, two things up at the reservoir. One is a pit that we go down into to check the chlorine residual at the reservoir. That's the same thing. It's like a 10-foot ladder straight down. Uh, we have That'll be the harder one to figure out. On top of the reservoir, there's a ladder to get up on top of the reservoir, and it's just a wide-open ladder. So we're going to check into replacing it with an encased, you know, like uh, you see on the silos, that type thing for a safety feature where you walk up and walk out of it instead of this one is, is a little more dangerous. It's not, it's not a good design, let's put it that way, but it's what they had way back in the day. So, so those are our areas of concern that we're really working on. We're going to make sure we fix and rectify any, any issues in that regard so you know, no one gets hurt, especially me. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, also, uh, every, uh, every summer, we actually, you know, everyone's monitoring for this, the algae blooms. So we, we participate every time in these blooms surveys. So we'll take samples from the lake and from our, our water and send them into the health department. And they actually, uh, you know, have the results, which is it's a nice program. So we, the program runs from June, and they're going to November this year, which is an extended amount of time. But take a sample, run it to them, and they have a courier that takes it down. And so, so that's another added safety thing we do to make sure our water is good. Are you seeing any zebra mussels or anything like no, that? No, nope. Uh, we have the divers go down. Um, I can't remember the exact, I, I have to look it up in the paperwork there. But a diver, they usually go down to where the intake is and mm -hmm. clear everything off. Um, We've had we had last two or last year, we had a, um, divers up to the reservoir. They cleaned the tank, uh, both tanks. They cleaned our clear well and our backwash tank at the plant. Uh, they were very clean in regards to this gentleman that did it. He said that um, in five years go do an inspection, and probably next cleaning in ten years. So that's that's how good they were, which is a good thing. So. Other well, than that, the plant's doing very well. We're, you know, trying to make sure that it's good water. Okay.
Thank you. So as a follow-up to the Avery thing, that's what we had talked about at yep. last trustees. It's a test for the rest of the year at no cost to the taxpayer. What I really appreciate about it is we have the department leadership meetings. They came up with a solution on their own, again, to kind of repurpose personnel for safety reasons and workload. And I think, I think it's going to work, and we'll have an evaluation at the end of the year to come in and say either we're right-sized or we need to make further adjustments. Yep. But we're always going to be looking for the further adjustments to make sure we're operating as safely as possible. Yeah. And on a side note, <coughs> we have to commend the employees of our association here uh, for working together like that. Mm -hmm. We were in dangerous situation when COVID came and being uh, not able to complete all our tasks, but the like you say, Bill, the uh, the employees made it work, and uh, that's why they're so valuable. So. The willingness of everybody to get along, especially at the leadership level, has been phenomenal. Yeah. So. And I've been around thousands of employees, and we had a great team. Yes. They work together well. Yeah. They and somebody needs a hand. There's there's no right. no I can't. It's all hands on deck. Right. And yeah, I really appreciate it because we always would walk down and we do a tour of Todd's place and it's like a chemist lab, by the way, yeah. and all the stuff that I can't even begin to pronounce that he just rolls off. I mean, he's like a scientist now. <laughs> and it's so to have somebody else there because, you know, honestly, he could have collapsed yeah. and we wouldn't have known for a few hours and a few hours is not acceptable. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, kudos to you for your leadership and everything that you've done down there. I, it's it's just we're in a, an absolutely good place if we can get four people certified at the levels they need to be for mm -hmm. water and wastewater in an on-call rotation. I think we're going to be right-sized in water and wastewater. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions? I have a question. Todd? Absolutely. Have you seen any sturgeon or have you seen champ? <clears throat> <laughs> no. Uh, unfortunately, hon, there's a lot of trees down across that I can't see the lake that well from my window up in the office. But uh, Well, we might get the sturgeon back because at Echo, mm -hmm. they're raising yep. sturgeons. Yeah. Right. I think there's a, a lot of, you know, a lot of people see a lot of things on the lake because to me, I think Maquam Shore is blooming or blossoming again. A lot more people. I'm noticing, mm -hmm. you know, some of the buildings are now new owners and there's a lot of work being done down there, so it's really, it's a nice, it's a beautiful area, so. So you folks are probably all too young, but I remember seeing sturgeon when I lived on the other side of the river, as big as a car. And that's no fish tail. <laughs> I, look, I was making eye contact, I'm with you, yeah. I believe you. <laughs> okay. Where is the facility located? Halfway down on Maquan Shore, you know where Swanton Beach is. Yes. About a mile and a half the, down the road on the left hand side. On the left. So right on the curve. Or the curve. When you guys That's talk right. hydro facility, is that the one on 207? Hydro's the up there. Or? Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Okay, any more questions for Todd before we release him? <laughs> release him. Release him. You're welcome to stay if you want to talk. But. I probably won't because uh, <laughs> I do have some more work to do at home. But <laughs> yeah. So okay. Thank, thank you very much, guys. Thank, thank you. Good job. Uh, thank, good thank you. Job. So. Oh. <clears throat> Item number yeah. nine on our agenda this evening: uh, review nice. and authorize our village manager to sign the AMI contract. So. Oh, <laughs> Thanks, Todd. Bit, so. Lynn, do you want me to handle that, or do you want to handle that? Um, I can do it. Okay. So, the AMI contract has been several years in the making. Uh -huh. um, that's the contract that will be between the utilities and VEPSA, um, as this project was a VEPSA group project to start with. And now they're starting to get ready to deploy and do the back end and then start installing the meters. Um, we've had to switch gears a little bit at the last end. Uh, we were going to do the electric meters first, 
and now we're going to do the water meters first because of the timeline in order to get the electric meters. Um, the water meters are more readily available. So Swanton is in the first group, so we're year one along with three other utilities. And what this contract lays out is basically their responsibilities, our responsibilities, uh, that we will pay the bill when they send it to us on a monthly basis. Um, so that's kind of it in a nutshell. I believe Diane had sent you the contract previous to this meeting to review. Yep. Does anybody have any questions about it? <clears throat> yes, I have one. It's really long, and to understand it completely, you need to be a, have a degree in law. I mean, I understand somebody's covering themselves, but my goodness, I, I'm not afraid of reading, but my goodness, this is hard. <laughs> so I, once, when we got it originally, I sent it off to our attorney, yes. and the comments that I had were basically um, the same comments that other utilities had asked also. There was some minor adjustments from this version to the previous version. And uh, one thing that I had a concern about in there was it talked about um, us not being able to, I read it as us being able to not take out additional debt. Um, but what it basically, the lawyer said, no, that's not what it meant. Um, so it's more like, you know, we have to make sure we go through the proper channels and get a 108 in order to take out other debt as if, you know, under normal course of business, like we would as an electric utility. Yeah. Um, these, uh, so some of the assets that are getting put into service are going to be FEPSA owned. Um, and some of it, like the back office stuff is all going to be FEPSA owned because it's, you know, we're one of nine or 10 utilities. Um, there's the stuff that is going to be ours, like the meters are going to be ours. Um, so it's going to be kind of a split where some of the assets are going to go on our books. The other part, we're just going to have a monthly fee on because it'll be on the best of the books. Hey, Lynn, quick question. Yeah. Uh, as I was going through this and I agree with Jean, it was, uh, you know, a lot of big words that I didn't even understand. Um, but on page 10, and it's letter G, it says the village shall not have the right to challenge any bill, invoice, or statement rem rendered by VEPSA. That, that's the biggest thing that stuck out for me. I think that's normal legal jargon. Um, you know, it's, I've never questioned, I mean, obviously if they bill something wrong, we ask them about it. But I believe this is, you know, basically um, so that we don't start getting into a he said, she said match. In other parts of this contract, they talk about, you know, there's going to be a budget that's going to get sent out to all of the members to approve it, of, you know, at a board meeting. And, you know, there'll be monthly statements about it. I think this is just the normal course of business. Um, I'm not concerned about that. You know, Bill sits on the board. I'm an alternate on the board. Uh, we're going to see these budgets in advance of, you know, and Bill's going to have to be one of the votes to approve or not approve the budget. So I don't feel that that's a, you know, a concerning comment in there. Okay. It just, I mean, the way they worded it was, you know, again, in my little brain, you know, it, you take what you get and you just deal with it. So, you know, and I know that's not how we work. I, yeah, I concur with Lynn. I have little concerns other than the uh, massive legal document of 16 pages that is, I, that is difficult to read, but it does have a lot of standard language. And at the end of the day, um, we're ready first with water metering, which is good. So the, the example and how beneficial this is going to be to the system, you know, sometimes we get those phone calls, somebody doesn't know they have a leak and it takes a while mm -hmm. to be discovered. We're going to know the leak within hours. Maybe. Yeah. Day, I mean, at, day at the most. 
and and that's going to and we'll be able to go out we'll know where it is everything's going to be gis it we're going to be in a much better place when we have ami for water and electric definitely yep <clears throat> no doubt i don't disagree with the document as such and i can understand <clears throat> seeing the increase in water usage in my own case yes do the due diligence of somebody in the office here i yep. saved some money. Right. <laughs> right. And we weren't on now, EMI yet. Yeah. On the front end, this is going to be quite a horrendous undertaking. Mm -hmm. You know, we have limited staff. Um, in the water meter cases, we are going to, we have to go into people's homes and change out their meters. Yeah, you do. Most of our meters are in excess of 20 years old. Um, that's outside of their life expectancy. So we're going to have to, instead of just being able to change the box on the outside of the house, we're going to have to go in the house and change out the meter. In addition to that, a lot of these meters do not have shutoffs on either side of the meter. So those we're going to have to shut the water off and we're going to have to have a plumber go in and put shutoffs in, in addition to the meter. So whereas the electric meter, we're going to be able to do right at, you know, wherever the meter is on the pole or on the side of the house, the water meter is going to be a little more intensive. Yeah, our next step literally once we get through this process is to uh, do an RFP process and seek proposals from interested vendors, plumbers, who are willing not only to be able to do and have the capacity to do the job, but to send somebody that can actually meet and greet our citizens in the proper way. <laughs> Not that they're representing the village, but they are. We will have somebody there in the back end, but you can't just have just anybody that's a curmudgeon that has no communication skills going out to deliver these uh, uh, systems to our citizens. That would be disastrous. <laughs> it would be disastrous. So uh, we, we, fingers crossed, you hope to identify a vendor that has the capacity and willingness to do this job. Yeah. And no one has been identified yet, but, but this is going out now. Just, we're just, we're, we haven't even crafted that document yet. And we'll do that okay. with other VEPSA folks, but we're early on, so we're kind of, uh, they're going to learn from us. Now, is the water meter going to be a different contract? Are they going to be two contracts, one for water, one for electric? Yeah, water will go first. Lynn, how much at this point, what's the estimate for how far behind the electric meters are? The electric meters, I believe, are, what did they say, 16, 18 weeks out. Yeah. The water meters are, you know, a fraction of that. But the delay... The, the electric the, meters were over a year out at the, yeah. earlier this year. That's to get the meters. But, Lynn, what was the, the difference in timeline for the beginning of water meters? I know that's pretty quickly versus the beginning yeah of like they're going to start um, i believe the back end stuff is going to start in july that beps will start installing all of the like the hardware that they have to have down in waterbury so yeah it's not that far out we're going to be doing this this summer yeah. mm. and into the fall Perfect. so if you know any plumbing companies that have uh, interest in doing this please uh, let us know oh boy I, I volunteer to be part. first. That's the tough part. Yeah. You want to go first? Sure. Okay. If you want somebody, I've got a home. Does it have to be a plumbing company? It's got to be a master plumber. Yes. It's got to be somebody who's a certified master plumber yes. and who can be with an apprentice, but it's going to have to be... Uh, it's going to have to be a team. It's going to have to be probably a company that's large enough. And then we're going to demand that they identify folks within their organization that again can represent what we're trying to do in the right way. Ben Fulger is a plumber. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, yep. And I have another question for the public. How many water meters do we have? We are over 1,500 water meters. And we, I have identified close to 1,200 of those that need to be changed out because of their age. It's a big plumbing job. Mine's one of them. Now, I, I wanted that out there. Yeah. And then for those that want to bid on the AMI thing, which probably won't be anybody that I know, 
You're talking about around 3,700 meters? No, well, no, about, about 50, uh, 1,500 water meters. So, yeah. so meters that don't have to be changed out, we just have to change a box on the side of the house. That our people can do. It's the meters in the house that need shutoffs added to them are what we're going to need a plumber to do. But we've got around 1,200 meters that need to be changed out. That's I'm okay. not sure how many of them already have shutoffs. So we yeah. can just shut the water off and plug and play. Uh, but Dean was pretty confident that a large majority are going to have to have shutoffs put in. In my case, I want to know what. <laughs> However, uh, how many electric meters are there? We have about 3,800 electric meters. There, that's what I and wanted to get out. line crew will do. <laughs> because you, we're talking about a yeah. job that's pretty good size for VEPSA. And they, you might get a company that wants to do them all. But in the case of our meters, and correct, we're going to do that in-house, correct, Lynn? Our electric meters yeah. we're doing in-house. Yeah, we, we got that. Okay. It's nice to have your own electric company. <laughs> we'll, Sometimes. We, we will, uh, we'll do those. That's yeah. good. Yep. Yeah, they're easy to do. Well, I think they're all outside. Most of them. Oh, if you know what you're doing. Harry. Not all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I suppose so. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be easy for me. <laughs> no, not for me. No. So we won't put new meters in until about a year from now, probably at the most, huh? For electric? Oh, I would say about, yeah. It's gonna, and that will take a while. Yeah, it's gonna take one. Yes. So the public can expect visitors for water meters soon. They will be notified. We will do uh, public service announcements in various social media places for sure. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. they will not be surprised. Yeah. Right, and then yeah. what I'm anticipating is that you know we will schedule mm -hmm. because obviously you know we've got people in all demographics. We've got people that are stay-at-home moms. We've got or dads. We've got retired people. We've got people that work. You got people that work various shifts. So we're going to try to accommodate people. Um, so we're going to be calling and scheduling these appointments and um, so that we can fit their schedules with the least inconvenience. And we've had our attorney review the document, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Eli has reviewed it and he, he reviewed ours and I know of two other utilities that he also reviewed. So every utilities document is the same. Right. It's just the name of the company is different. So yeah, he's okay. reviewed and signed off on these. Okay. Yeah, that one that one sentence right. just Yeah. <laughs> that is a good ad Lynn that we didn't point out. Every entity that's going through the same thing under VEPSA's umbrella has the same exact contractual language that they're yeah. signing off yeah. on. I gathered that. Yeah, yeah. yeah Makes good. sense. Right. Many eyes looked at it. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we need to authorize the village manager to sign the contract. That's correct. So we need a motion to that effect. I will make that motion that we authorize the village manager to sign the uh, AMI contract <clears throat> as presented. Okay. I'll second the motion. Motion has been made and seconded to authorize village manager Bill Sheets to sign the contract for the, uh, just for the audience, automatic metering interface. Infrastructure. Yep. Infrastructure. Advanced. Automatic metering infrastructure. Yeah, so actually the title is Vermont Public Power Supply Authority Agreement for Advanced Metering Infrastructure Project. Advanced. Yeah. Put that in the minutes. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be there. It's recorded. Yeah. Diane's got it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. The motion has been made and seconded. Any more discussion? If not, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion is carried unanimously. Bill, you've got another job. Thank you. Uh, item number 10 on our agenda this evening, approve appointment of authorized representative for clean water and drinking water state revolving fund loans. Where are we going to find that representative? It's me. Oh, You're okay. nominating me and we're removing Reg's name from that process uh, just for continuity's sake so that I am 
uh, okay. receiving all information. And Lynn will continue so that, to be the second. So that is both the water project mm -hmm. for the Missisquoi River, yep. and it is also the wastewater project for the plant upgrade. Those are the two projects we have in process right now. So it's going to apply to both of those. Yeah. It's the same document that does both. Yep. Okay. I move we appoint our village manager as the representative for clean water and drinking water state revolving loan fund. There. Plural. And I'll second or Chris will second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any more? We don't need So that is yeah. Can I interject for a second? That also puts me, I believe I was already the alternate on that, but that also lists me as the alternate. Okay. Yeah, correct, sorry. and it also requires a signature of the legislative body, yeah. including the motion, so that's the form right there. Okay, so we have a motion that also includes the uh, alternate representative, Bill and Lynn. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. You guys have another job. Congratulations. Thank you. Wonderful opportunity. I think it's an existing job. Okay. Legislative body, the trustees. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's just the trustees. Correct. I mean, I'm sure, Mr. President, if you want to throw a signature on there, it'll be okay. No harm done, but it's not needed. So, okay. Now it's your turn, Bill. Village manager's update. I'm going to be very brief tonight. So we had our uh, governor's cabinet meeting that started in Richford. And again, you heard a little bit of that from Tim Smith, but the turnout was phenomenal. Yeah. And, you know, kudos to the governor and his, and his cabinet because they really uh, took the time to answer any and all questions related to the massive amount of funding opportunities that are now available. Economic development, ag, uh, commerce, transportation. You, transportation. I mean, you name it, they were there and they, they gave you avenues. Uh, we continued that. We went to the uh, the airport. We met with uh, Secretary Flynn. We had discussions there for a tour. And then luckily, and with full credit to Heidi Bridge Valenta, our new hire, uh, who has a great background and a great reputation, she was able to, solely based on her reputation and her contacts, get that crew to come here. And we spent about two hours for uh, with a comprehensive tour with a bunch of cabinet officials and, and other folks, other community folks, uh, Mr. President was able to join us. And really, just nothing but good things from that. They, uh, we started here, we gave them a quick tour, just a verbal overview of everything that we have going on in the village, starting with just, you know, from the Hotel Riv site at 6 South River Street up and the fact that we bought 124 First Street next door, we're looking to bond for a public safety facility. But then probably more importantly, we did a walking tour and they said their feedback was it's the first walking tour that they've had. And we parked in Gordon's Ace lot. Uh, we started there, we went inside the Ace building and then we went down to Marble Mill. We talked again about the RIV, uh, what, what remains there, uh, the Depot Street Bridge, the Veteran uh, Memorial Bridge. Uh, what we have to do there, and then we took really a, a tour of what we have going on in the village. The fact that we have 300000 with a $75,000 match, what we want to do for that downtown corridor, as importantly, what the additional needs are, which we know based on the study, the scoping study, we need at least another million just to kind of do what we wanted to do in that scoping study. Uh, and we talked about wastewater treatment and, and a whole host of things. Great question and answer. They delayed till the last possible minute um, and then they went on their way to St. Albans. But here's the feedback, right? The tour you think is good. And it wasn't just lip service because we got a call unsolicited, Heidi and I, to join them last Thursday for a call. So there's a fourth round of funding for a up to 20% of project cost, up to $1 million for wastewater treatment. The, we meet all the criteria. 
we had a meeting today with Wayne Elliott from, from A&E, &E, and the timeline, everything is there, so we are going to apply and hopefully have a, uh, a meeting to kind of follow up on that grant meeting, uh, board meeting, to get in the queue in July and then get that approved. It's good. We know what we have to do for bond, but think about it. One visit, 20% reduction in project cost. No, it's, it's not a loan. It's, it's just, it is a grant that you don't have to pay back. And there's other stuff out there. There's, uh, it is an unprecedented time. And I think what we keep hearing is do all you can to sharpen your pencil and get everything project ready because this all goes away at the end of 2026. Right. And it has to be encumbered. So there's going, for those communities that are most ready, uh, willing and able to do their projects and have them identified and in the pipeline, there is going to be more money available for those because you don't ever want to let that money go back to the feds. And there's no, there's going to be no, there's talk, there's definitively no extension of those deadlines. So it just, I can't say enough about the uh, the tour. I think uh, it's it's that development, and I can't say enough. Heidi's been with us for seven days part time, and already we uh, were just we're exploring so many different layers of opportunities for us. Uh, and it's like I said, I, I don't think we could afford not to do that. And already, based on contacts and the fact that they came here, it's competitive. There's no guarantee. But you know, I'm I'm a little uh, glass almost full all the time. It's a problem for me. I think we're gonna get I think we're gonna get a million dollars. I really do. And then there's many many more millions out there for the taking. So, any questions reference that economic development tour? No, I just want to add, Bill, uh, from my take uh, as as co tour, uh, I think the state people were real comfortable here. I mean, they they didn't feel like they were being pegged from outsiders, uh, they felt home at home here in, in Swan Village. So uh, I think that reflects on what Bill said the, the reaction was on Thursday. So yeah. he did a good job, great job. So. Everybody, it was, uh, it was a good effort. Uh, our new website, so very briefly. Uh, oh, yes, oh, sorry. Can I ask a question? Of course. Was there any talk about the rail trail? Was yes. Oh, yeah. 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 So let's talk about that. So this was uh, this was some commerce folks and actually Secretary uh, Lindsay Curley herself talked about the fact that that needs to be our collective marketing effort with some other stuff that I'm going to talk about. But, right? <coughs> what an opportunity to identify, especially for our Canadian partners and any transient traffic that we have talking about and selling that and other recreational opportunities. That we need a reason, continual reason for people to want to visit our community. That's why we need to continue to develop the downtown core. We need restaurants, we need additional businesses, we need housing, we need all of that. And it all, it, we need something that is, well, we need many things, but we need something that is gonna serve as kind of that, uh, that anchor business, but the rail trail and where it connects right over to the railroad museum. Critical part, critical part. So they absolutely mentioned it. Here's how much they mentioned it. They mentioned it to the point where when we start to apply for other types of grants, small, medium, or large, does not matter. Use that as a springboard towards saying, hey, this is why we want to infuse Swanton with all the things we're talking about. So we need to get the farmhouse group to get a restaurant down here for this building. We need to get somebody here for sure, uh, and, and when you know to walk inside that place and to think and have the vision of what it looks like now mm. and its historic tradition, and being able to walk in and see kind of that bakery in the back and the front half being a restaurant. And I even think, you know what? Let's put some stairs here, and let's have a second balcony area with some outdoor seating. Uh, right? We need we need that anchor spot. And I think once it's here, I don't think it can fail. No. Oh, I don't. I don't think it can fail. Yeah. We've been asking for that for yeah. way before mm -hmm. SEP started. Yeah. And one thing that Gordon did clarify to the state people 
was that he was looking for the right fix yes, for that building. I read that. Uh, he's not. He said he could sell it to a, a chain in an right. instant, but he says he wanted something that would serve the community for what right. we need. And uh, I will commend uh, Gordon and Debbie for holding out for the right yes. party to go in there. So. Or for even saving the theater, no one else would have done that. Right. You know. Right. Um, yeah. We're, we're, it's just such an exciting time to be living in Swanton. Yep. Yeah. It is. Thank you all. Yeah. So. Oh, well, thank all you. Enjoy. Any other questions? Reference that tour. Okay. So the uh, combined website uh, looks great. We're trying to, uh, we had training. So there are five of us, Lynn, Diane, Liz Williams, Matt Sullivan, and myself that went through the training. It's just an hour and a half of training. So the thought is, and this is how easy it is, they say, ready for this? They say that I will be able myself to go on and mm. update things and make tabs and announcements and things like that. So uh, pretty, uh, pretty good stuff. Um, you know, it's, we conduct a final review, May 25th, May 31st, it's live. Great. So our next meeting, you'll get a full tour, you'll get it before that, and you know, you'll be able to say, hey, look, uh, this doesn't line up right. I want this, I want to feature this. Well, there's five people internally that can make those changes. So uh, it looks pretty intuitive to me. I, I got We were told to go and try to break it. See if we could break it behind the scenes. It's not live yet, so we're not, you know, we can, it's so intuitive, you can go back literally on a page and with a click, revert back for each and every section, all collectively or independently, so it goes back to the way it was before. Huh. Yeah, it's, really? uh, do you it's, have a name? it's gonna be really good. Do you have a name for it yet? As in the domain name? Yeah. Oh, why'd you ask me that? Yes, sir, I do. <laughs> it's not gonna change. No. No, it no. So it, it it's SwantonVermont.gov. SwantonVT.gov is going to be the site for all of us. And then you know it is not live yet. So instead of trying to go over it, um, when we go live, we'll show you. You will be you will be very pleased as to the look and the feel of it. It's uh, so much better than the old. So go live is May thirty one. Correct. Okay. Yep. And I do have your notes for, for the chamber concerns and, and all that stuff. Anything, okay. and again, it, it ties everything together. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. Any questions reference to the website? Nope. Or can we catch up at some point between yeah. whenever your busy schedule allows you? I have nothing but time and the availability for more projects and dialogue. <laughs> I'll see you in three hours. <laughs> That's a new attitude. The nose is getting longer and longer. I actually meant it, but I did say it with a little passive aggressiveness. It's 8.15 passive aggressiveness. Wait till 10.15. Any other questions reference that? Okay, so Marble Mill. This is kind of a, a neat little uh, letter that we got. It was forwarded by an adult paraeducator. I went to the town, eventually came over to us. It's from a 12-year-old who wanted to talk about ways to fundraise to pick up things and make Marble Mill Park a little better. All it did is serve for me, I, I got up out of my desk, off my desk, and Heidi was here, I'm like, let's take a ride. So I just wanted to fact check what the email said. Well, some of the things were no longer correct. I mean, it was mowed, it was immaculate, it was really nice, there were no wasp nests anymore, I didn't see any trash anywhere. Some of the things were very factual. Uh, the nets are in disarray down there. Uh, you know, the, the fencing is in poor condition. There is graffiti with some unsavory remarks on it. So there are things, right, and we own it. All it prompted me to do is to reach out uh, for Nicole Draper, and I spent about an hour with her just kind of saying, hey, let's talk about this. How can we move forward again collaboratively if we're making... The big vision, by the way, so we, we were in the parking lot for the marble mill and just, you know, at a distance at the intersection, talking about, you know, with the state people. With the state people. Yes, sorry. I jump all over the place sometimes when I get excited. But there was also the discussion, you know, they're tapping you on the shoulder saying, hey, do you know? And it's, do you know there's millions of dollars in money for flood prone 
park areas. So think about a vision someday, right, where you drive in and it's nothing but green space with a bandstand or whatever up above high enough so, it, and they do, they do flood proof stuff. And it's a place where you can canoe and kayak and you have all kinds of activities that are outdoor activities. What wouldn't be allowed to be there anymore, candidly, is tennis courts and the skateboard park and things like that. So. There's ongoing discussions with the town and with, uh, with Nicole and her crew for the relocation of tennis courts and, oh, sorry, pickleball courts. That's as important, probably more important than tennis courts. It's the same thing, just a little bit yeah. shorter. But really, really popular to include at Marble Mill, by the way. So the, just a dialogue. So I asked the question of, okay, Nicole, so where are we in the process of recreation replacing the nets the tennis nets that well, they look horrible down there and she said well that's in our arena you own it i did check with lynn and lynn verified that we in fact in the past have paid for to replace those nets all i'm pointing out is let's live more collaboratively together and maybe come up with a plan where we can talk more openly and candidly about how we want to move forward on all things recreation. Nicole Draper, to me, is hitting it out of the park. I loved our conversation. I, 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 really, uh, I really did. And I think that uh, they're making great strides there. And I just, uh, we can go and do things right away, by the way. We can take time out of our schedule in public works with Dean, and we can repaint those lines probably once a year. It probably needs it. We will again purchase for four months of portalette to put down there like we did last year. So that's a repetitive thing that we, that we can do. Some of the things that we can't do, uh, you know, we can't really do much with a fence, nor should we. It's again, it's in a, we're, ne we're never going to get any money for that type of purpose. No true resurfacing of, of the tennis courts. If we ever wanted to do that, it would be at our cost. And yeah. I think it's contrary to what maybe the ultimate plan might be. Right. So I just pointed out for saying that, you know, we on our own time can go in and, and do some things. I do think I wanted to bring up to you. I want your stance on how aggressively we begin to battle this graffiti problem. Two schools of thought. One is you go and paint it and you just create a nice canvas for them for the next day. Yeah. The other school is you hold them accountable. You do what we can to police it when you can knowing that there's a finite amount of resources, especially during certain hours. Yeah. But that's, that's the tough conversation. Personally, I think we should combat it and try to make it go away and identify someone who, uh, you know, we can go and, and try to clean it up. And it doesn't hurt to try. And if it keeps coming back and if all we're doing is uh, painting a can pre presenting a canvas for them that's free for them to continue to creatively deface, then we make adjustments. Fair enough. So I know I'm saying a lot. What I would like to do is just make you aware that we would like to, on our behalf, go ahead and paint the lines on the three courts for tennis and pickleball, engage in a dialogue for the replacement of nets, but more, I think, globally, uh, engage with the select board and the rec center to talk about how we move forward kind of with a little more comprehensive planning. Can we take the canvases down? So they could put the graffiti on there? Ultimately, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, that, so it's the big concrete structure that's adjacent to the skateboard park. Can we do it and keep the skateboard park and keep it safe where they're not going to have something to fall into? Yeah, we can certainly explore that. Well, you want to wait Is there an close, opportunity so? for the art people to do yeah. something down there? Instead of the graffiti, I think I think cover it up with graffiti. Yeah, that's the concern. I think if it is there, <clears throat> it's a ripe target in a ripe environment that's kind of off the beaten path for people to yeah. to do. That's to perfect. So well, they, just I, I just a thought. I mean, I haven't been down there to look lately. What I wanted to do was make a make the path that went around to uh, what's the little street number? What street is it? Webster, Webster, Webster Terrace. Terrace. Right. Make that, make that a little walkway, mm -hmm. bike path kind of thing. Sure. Kind of a fun way to go down by the water. Yeah. But um, it's well lit down there. Mm -hmm. put, a, put a camera up. 
Yeah. You know. Yeah, and I don't know that we need a definitive answer today. I know I'm drawing no, a lot no, of no. but it's just something it's just to discuss. Idea. Yeah. Because yeah. ultimately, if we do what you, you're proposing, have it all green space, that's going to disappear anyway. Correct. And it's it's a liability issue for us. Like the people climb up on that safe, fall inside, and we wouldn't find them for days. So. Uh, and yeah, and when and propose might be too strong. Suggest, but I think as we revisit all this grand plan, if there is an alternate alternative location for all the facilities that are down there, then why wouldn't we create a beautiful green space that again, so then you have the additional anchor in addition to the Lamoa Valley Rail Trail. Think about that. People are coming with biking, walking, hiking, fishing, kayaking, you you name it. They're gonna we can be that destination. Then they can stop in for an ice cold beverage of their choice at a nice new restaurant. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's probably enough about that. Yes? Yes. Ben, only 17 more things. No, we're good. Okay. Uh, 124 First Street, that's the property next door. So just a quick update. We, uh, we on our own, again, it's great having your own public uh, works organization. So we went with a civil engineer and we dug the test pits, six different locations. We expect by the end of next week, those results, right? The whole process hinges on the results structurally of the civil engineers. Yes. And what we're going to do first and foremost with stormwater. Again, their concern, uh, not really a concern. It's my concern. You can't go up in grade that's how if I were to build a different building that wasn't attached, it wasn't going to be a fire department that needs an apron, you just build up and then you have conventional stormwater runoff. Well, here we can't really do that. So we, we're going to wait to see what we need as a solution. Maybe nothing, but every one foot that you raise the grade over there, over the length of your apron on each side is two inches. So you can raise it about a foot and get away with it. And that's about it. Other than that, you're talking about uh, probably some type of pump system. Undoubtedly, on each end, you're going to have large stormwater retention ponds, which you're going to need. You're going to need for, for the runoff. So that lessens your ability to expand. A retention pond. When we have storm, storm drains over there, you can't put that in the storm. Mr. President, I'm simply relaying the information. I'm putting Chris's hat on, the engineer's hat. Uh, <laughs> we shall see what the solutions will be. There's nothing insurmountable about it, but it's just that's where we're at with the property. And then the last thing there is we went, we went out to bid, and I think there were seven firms, Vermont firms, that have entered the bid process to be construction managers. And remember, that's the phase... Seven? Seven, I really? think seven. Ever. So those are due, I believe those are due by the end of this month. We will then score, have a rubric, select one, and then, and then it's their job to identify a definitive cost to go to bond. Hmm. And then they'll likely be the contractor. So that's where we're at there. Okay, Mr. President, let's, let's remain calm. <laughs> the Missisquoi River... Oh. What water crossing? So the 1.2 million bond that we received to go from Canada Street down Webster across to connect the foundry for a, a, a main water line that goes under the river. Uh, we are slightly delayed based on the fact uh, the results of an archaeological assessment. There were three positive test pits which will require additional investigation. We are still on pace for this year, late summer, fall. We're still on pace mm -hmm. this year. So far. Yes. I'm not surprised, but. I'm, uh, we, I'm no, Switzerland. We, we, ran, we, yeah. we ran into the same mm -hmm. delay when we came down from uh, yeah. the reservoir. Yep. Mm -hmm. A lot of fire Yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt. You did not interrupt because I am going to conclude with that. That's all I have until executive session. How about that? Short tonight. <laughs> I think I think it's Bill that's supposed to sign this part of it right here. It says Village Electric Department. 
I don't think it's me. But I do sign this one. Yeah, right. Well, I just oh, they could have packed it. So yeah, could have mislabeled it. Yeah. Oh, just sign the second one. Uh, okay, thanks, Bill. And uh, yeah, the next item before the last item before executive okay. session is any other necessary business. So, does anyone want to bring any other necessary business up? Did you start to open your mouth? Yes. I'm, thanks. <laughs> wow. Um, going back to the bridge. Yes. Um, now that I'm working out of the chamber office, I've had an opportunity to speak with a few residents, um, you know, about the condition of the bridge. Mm -hmm. And one person that I spoke with earlier said, you know, I really like your idea of shutting the bridge down. And I said, well, <laughs> wow. I said, I said, yeah, <laughs> I was a little taken aback because they actually liked it. Yeah. But, um, you know, they, they bring up a good point. It's, it's very unsafe. Um, you know, this, I'm hoping the state is going to see through the visit, the condition of the bridge and want to help more than what they are. Um, but if they're not willing to help, we have to have that avenue in our back pocket. So I guess I'll, I'll go on record as saying that it's not deemed unsafe by the state of Vermont. So I, I just, I want to be, yep. I want to I understand fair. That. And I, I don't be, think they ever will. Right. I want to be fair to the agency of transportation. Yep. So I, I have met more than once now with the secretary of transportation, Joe Flynn, who I know well. We have, as a reminder, two, we got an extra $25,000 a few months ago. We have $200,000 for a repair of both joints, both expansion joints that need uh, remediation. That funding expires in about a year. We have one full construction cycle left. Side note, our public works folks have gone and met with somebody else who might have a viable remedy and asphaltic plug that might be within about $200,000. Otherwise, I have asked the secretary to reconsider and help us find an additional up to $200,000 so that we can do those repairs. For the folks in attendance, uh, the bridge does not, it's not slated for repair right now, for replacement until 2029. So I mean, the and they moved it back because we agreed to do the repair. If we hadn't agreed to do the repair, it would have been probably 24 or 25. Possibly. We don't know, but you we, were right. Right. So you were right. Uh, so yeah, the schedule now, and, and that's a that's a few years out. So mm -hmm. we would like to sp spend as little. What did you just say? Uh, you don't want to hear it. I think I. Oh, no. <laughs> Mrs. Kilburn, no. <laughs> No, you'll still be right there where you are oh, sitting yeah, in right. that chair. <laughs> you guys are talking about the bridge to like chamber over. Yeah, correct. The yeah, across yes. the river. Aren't the railings shorter than they're supposed to be? Yes. It's like somebody mm -hmm. mentioned that somewhere along the way. and They're not strong enough either. And I was like, yeah, because I walked along there. And it was really yeah. Long. Sidewalks not up to code, everything is off. But this one at the red, stay, the red mark. Stay tuned. Uh, it's all going to be upgraded in 2029. Okay. I'll be around. <laughs> I'll get my refill. So. Okay, where are we going, Bill? Where, <laughs> where will I be in 2029? Oh, well, I'm not so sure. <laughs> he, you might. he may still be having fun. He we was. don't know. We'll see. We'll see. It'll be we'll see. So, yes. yes. Um, my only other. No, I'm not going to take them. <laughs> nope, I'm not going to put it on camera. Um, oh, yes. Could I, you don't have to answer this if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. What's the situation with the swans, or is there a situation with yes. the swans? Uh, we're waiting on the pond to be fixed at this point. When, we, when, when there's time to do it, then we'll take care of it. Okay. 
So, but the swans are scheduled to come back? Yes. Okay. And we're still looking at some point a major upgrade of the whole thing? Yes. Okay. Good to hear. Yep. The hope is to have a community meeting at some point in the next 90 to 120 days. And uh, yeah, I know. And to, to relook at the pond and see what we can do. You know, there's a there's a group of three people at the chamber that are gathering information. And the hope is that, you know, when it's done, we can have a community forum mm -hmm. and invite the public out and, uh, you know, get their input. <clears throat> so. Okay. Good enough. Thank you, yep. Adam. You're welcome. So, anybody have anything else? Yes. If not, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session to discuss personnel and contracts. So, so moved. Okay. <laughs> second. Oh, second. Second. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who's first or second, please? Chris. Chris, Chris, Chris first. first. Okay, thank you. Second. Thank Who's you. Second. Thank you. Thank you.